No, many of you are wondering, Matt, did you film two tackle talks at the same time? And the answer to that question is yes, I, I did because this uh, free time is rare and I wanted to kind of bust out a couple of these while I had a second here at home. Uh, the point of this one is I, I figured I would go over some of the lures and colors and those kinds of things that I look for. Um, when fishing in clear water and how I get around some of those things. I know clear water to some people can be quite intimidating. Uh, for me, I kind of like it, but um, you know, I'm kind of weird. I fish for fish that don't want to bite on a regular basis and enjoy it. So I don't know what that says about me, but hopefully some of my perspective can help uh, some of you put more fish in the boat. All right, so the first thing when it comes to clear water is I usually gravitate towards more natural lures. I know some people really like their obnoxious kind of like highlighter colors, your strong chartreuses, your like opaque whites, those kinds of, of colors um, for clear water. And I know that there are certain bodies of water those work really, really well on and the fish will gravitate towards those because they're so uh, like strikingly different. Um, for me, I, I don't really care as much for those colors, I guess. Um, I don't, I, I haven't experienced that being the case on a lot of the clear bodies of water that I fish, um, whether it's spring at home in Iowa or here in the north woods of Wisconsin. Um, a lot of uh, what I have success with are more natural colors. So uh, the first thing that I kind of look for when I'm, I'm choosing colors, I guess, in clear bodies of water tends to be just like, does it emulate uh, the prey or forage that they, they have. So here is like a, a, this is a drop tine tackle growler. This is like, I think their black perch color. You know, it kind of looks like a perch, kind of looks like a bluegill, kind of looks like uh, maybe a crappie, but you know, it's it looks like several different things all at once that those fish are gonna be readily uh, preying upon and, and eating on a regular basis. Um, so yeah, again, some of these lures, it should come as a no-brainer. Like again, here's a suic that I use. This one's been used, abused, and chewed. Um, this is just the natural sucker color pattern. I don't know how many fish are on this suic, but it's a good jag of them. And that's just their high impact stuff. Apparently I've got, I just put fresh hooks on that. That's kind of sharp. Um, something too, something too uh, that uh, I never leave at home when I'm fishing clear water, whether that's in the spring or summer or whatever, is a swim bait. Swim baits are incredibly underrated in my opinion. Um, they're incredibly versatile baits and there's never a bad time to throw them. This just happens to be a Muskie Innovation swim dog um, that I had on hand at the time. This thing um, has caught, I think, two first muskies um, and put several other others in the boat, uh, not only for myself but um, for other people too. So again, it's just one of those things where it's kind of a subtle action, looks like a bait fish. Again, I'm, I'm choosing a natural color. It looks like crappies, it looks like perch, it looks like whatever uh, down there. Just a, a, a different take on a lot of different things. Here in the Northwoods, you'll find a theme that I really like walleye colored stuff. So like here's another example from Bucko. This is eight inch. I just had this on hand. I was throwing it earlier today. Um, you know, it's just kind of one of those deals. It looks like a lot of different things all at once. You'll kind of hear me uh, say that over and over and more or less repeat it. Um, but that's kind of a color that I gravitate towards that I've had uh, a good amount of success with. Um, here's another one from Drop Tine. This is, I think, Thatcher's Shiner color. It's kind of like got some silvers and blacks. I've had good luck on skunk type colors in clearer water. You know, it, it's it's your, it, in my opinion, it's kind of like the, the take on the good old black and nickel, but uh, more of a, a subtle version of that same take. So this just happens to be his eight, nine combo. It's a good looking, good looking lure. Obviously all these bait makers and, and the people that I work with will be listed below. Um, but that's just, you know, it, you'll, you'll see a theme as, as far as these colors are concerned. A lot of it is just straight up. They look natural. Well, I've been informed that, um, I need to hurry up. So anyway, another thing that I focus on in clear water is depth. So this is a musky mayhem grenade. It gets to a deeper point in the water column than most things uh, do as far as, um, as far as baits are concerned. So this is running at eight to 10 foot as I'm slow rolling it in. That's not where your typical bucktail is getting to. 
and therefore uh, it makes it very, very effective to get to that range that most lures aren't getting to. Continuing the depth theme, um, again, heli dog, one that's been working for me, something that's been a little different for my perspective this, this season so far, gets down to a depth range that some lures don't and it kind of hangs in the zone a little bit longer. Speaking of hanging in the zone, probably the lure that's done that the best for me this season as it's catching on things is the Dipstick XL. This thing has just been crushing this season, gets in the zone, hangs at like 8 to 10 foot, um, well below where those clear water fish can even see where you're at, um, and, and it's just getting crushed. So again, just getting down to those different zones um, really is helpful. Um, last but not least, um, there's two things that like help too with triggering fish in clear water and it's just like forcing them to make an instant choice. Um, when you're popping rubber through the water column or ripping it out of weeds, you're making that fish or forcing it to make a decision whether it's going to just let that meal pass or take a chance at eating it. And the less of a better look that it gets at your bait, the better because generally speaking they can probably identify if it's if it's a fish or not a fish so another lure that does a really good job of that for me is the Ridgeway uh, customs I've caught these caught fish in, in water of you know anywhere between 20 feet of visibility and like eight foot of visibility to like six inches of visibility so it's just one of those things where if you have if you've got a lure that's like forcing those fish to make a choice instantly you know, sometimes they're not, they're not gonna move or do anything, but if you force them to make that decision, a lot of times um, they're gonna just react and crush the bait, so. Anyway, that's some of uh, my tips for clear water. They're far from perfect, they're far from exact, and far from precise, but those are the things that I've done and had some success with um, as I've fished a lot of clear water. As always, appreciate all of you watching. If you find these tips helpful, leave a comment. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'll be glad to answer any of those. Um, with that being said, uh, good luck the rest of the season. And I'll catch you all in the next one.